Okay, a common question that belongs with bal balancing equations is that they will ask you to balance an equation and then say, use the law of conservation of mass to prove that your equation is balanced. Now, you will soon find if you understand how to do this that your equation is not balanced if you use the law of conservation of mass if you've done something wrong. So the law of conservation of mass is a good safeguard for checking you've um, done your balancing properly in the previous step. So the law of conservation of mass says the total mass of particles before a reaction and the total mass of the particles after a reaction remains constant. And we like to use this word particles because particles covers atoms, molecules, ions, all of the different kinds of things that we can do with atoms to turn them into different chemical things. Okay, so the total mass of the particles before a reaction and the total mass of the particles after a reaction remains constant. So when reactions go to products, mass here equals mass there. So if you've got sodium and chlorine in the reactants, you will have sodium and chlorine in the products. So whatever atoms you've got in the reactants are what you're going to get in the products. So this drives me mad when I ask um, people questions. If I react this and this, what do you think I'm going to get? And then they give me a product that has not even got an atom that um, is existing in the reactant. So really, we are doing chemistry, not witchcraft. So whatever atoms we have in the reactants will end up in the products. Okay, so carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen this side, carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen that side. Then the number of atoms in the reactants is equal to the number of atoms in the products. This is what the balancing is all about, getting the atoms in the reactants to equal the atoms in the products. Yes, the molecules on the left and the molecules on the right can be different, but there's a big difference between an atom and a molecule, and that's why we count the atoms and not the molecules, because the atoms remain the same before and after the reaction. And this means Matter can neither be created nor destroyed. It's me merely um, transformed. The mass before is equal to the mass after because we are following the law of conservation of matter. So how does this work out in real life? If we, for instance, look at the reaction between hydrogen and nitrogen to make ammonia, and this is a reversible reaction, so I put little reversible arrows over here. If we look at this reaction, we've got one, two, three hydrogen molecules and one nitrogen molecule molecule remember hydrogen and nitrogen are diatomic whenever you do balancing of equations you uh, and are asked to find formula you have to know your diatomic molecules so if we look here this is actually the balanced equation i haven't asked you to balance it here's the balanced equation three hydrogens plus one nitrogen go to two ammonia if you count the atoms on the side one two three four five six hydrogens one, two, three, four, five, six hydrogens, okay? One, two nitrogens, one, two nitrogens. So my atoms on my left balance the atoms on the right. They can say to you, use the law of conservation of mass to prove that this is balanced. And then what you do is you go look here, hydrogen, nitrogen, ammonia. You say, what is the mass? This big M stands for what is the mass? Of nitrogen. And then you go to your periodic table and you look in your periodic table. Look, I've zoomed it over here. Your nitrogen weighs 14, but I have got an N2 molecule. So inside this molecule, I've got two 14s, okay? And so that is going to work out to be 28. Can you see over here? 28. Then I say to you, I've got one, two, three hydrogens. I go to my periodic table. He has hydrogen over here. Here it's enlarged over here. Hydrogen has a mass of one, okay? Remember, there's the key to use your periodic table over here. So this has got a mass of one, but I've got three diatomic molecules. So here, this two times one is the two hydrogens making up the diatomic molecule. And here's my three, for I've got three hydrogen molecules per one nitrogen molecule. So this works out to be two times one is two times three is six. So on my left-hand side, Okay, I've got 28 plus 6. Now we have to work out what's going on on the right hand side. So we look here, I've got two ammonias have formed. So what's in an ammonia? Ammonia is a nitrogen plus three hydrogens. So from my periodic table, nitrogen weighs 14, and that nitrogen is bonded to three hydrogens. So three times one is three. So 14 plus 3 is 17. So this, 
ammonia molecule is going to weigh 17 but I've got two ammonia molecules so it's two times the mass of the ammonia molecule so two times 17 is 34 so 28 and 6 is 34 is equal to 34 so my left hand side equals my right hand side which means I've proved the law of conservation of mass so 28 grams of nitrogen and 6 grams of hydrogen will give me 34 grams of ammonia. So this is how we prove the law of conservation of mass. We take the balanced equation, we get the masses of the atoms from the periodic table and we say masses on the left hand side equals masses on the right hand side. Have a look here, the formation of water, 2 hydrogen plus oxygen goes to water. So hydrogen is 1, oxygen is 16. Okay, hydrogen is a diatomic molecule. So here they've skipped a step. They've got four times one because they've said two times two is four. There are four hydrogen atoms here. There's two oxygen atoms here in this diatomic molecule. So two times 16. So I have four plus two times 16, which is 32. So I've got four plus 32 goes to two water. Inside the brackets is each water. Two times one for the hydrogens. So that's two plus 16 for the oxygen. So 2 plus 16 is 18. 18 times 2, 36. So 4 and 32 is 36 equals 36. Left hand side equals right hand side. I have proved the law of conservation of mass. Okay. So here's a more interesting example. Here's bicarb and sulfuric acid. Here H2SO4. Okay. And NaHCO3. So here's my bicarb, here's my sulfuric acid. And if you balance the equation, you need two bicarbs to one sulfuric acid is going to go to sodium sulfate plus water plus carbon dioxide gas. So if I had to put my state symbols in here, this would be AQ, this would be AQ, this would be AQ, this would be L, and this would be G. This would be a formation of a gas. And you can do exactly the same thing here. Okay, here I've got two sodiums, if you count these two molecules, okay, I've got two hydrogens, I've got two carbons, and I've got one, two, three, four, five, six oxygens, and I've got one sulfur, two hydrogens, and four oxygens, and then they are going to go to two sodiums, one sulfur, four oxygens, two oxygens, two, four hydrogens in the two water, and then two carbons, and four oxygens in the carbon dioxides okay and if you add these all up and you add these all up you have two sodiums two carbons four hydrogens ten oxygens one sulfur on the left and exactly the same on the right and so then this equation is balanced okay and then you can go to the periodic table and work out the masses and see if the mass on the left equals the mass on the right so if you have a look here he has this exact reaction gone from being the pictures to being the chemical formulas and he had to find the mass of the bicarb 23 for the sodium look he has the 23 for the sodium one for the hydrogen he has the carbon 12 for the carbon and then there's three times 16 for the oxygen look he has the 16 for the oxygen and then overall so this is one bicarb molecule ionic compound so this is one bicarb but in my balanced equation I've got two of them so I work out what's in the brackets and I multiply it by two okay and then we look at the sulfuric acid two for the hydrogens 32 for the sulfur okay in our periodic table sulfur is just averaged off at 32 if you've got a bigger periodic table they'll give you a decimal place so 32 for the sulfur and four oxygens because it's SO4 4 times 16 and then on the right he has your see look equals so this is the left hand side this whole line of working is the left hand side and this line of working is the right hand side so there's two sodiums because sodium is 23 he has the sulfur for the sulfate and there's the four oxygens over there then we do the water 2 times 1 is 2 plus 16 and there are two of these so we put the two outside the bracket Okay, so here's the coefficient, here's the water, plus another two carbon dioxides. So we put the two for the coefficient, and then 12 for the carbon, okay, 
and two sixteenths for the O2 because there's a 16 on the oxygen, two sixteenths. And if you put this all into your calculator very carefully, you should end up with 266 grams on the left and 266 grams on the right. And you say left hand side equals right hand side. Law of conservation of mass has been proved. Okay.